everyone, this is Whitney, and welcome back to another episode of Spastic Chatter. Spastic Chatter is a platform meant to feature those in the cerebral community, and I get together with individuals with CP, like myself, to have an uncensored chat, if you will, about what it's like living with this type of disability. And on this episode, I have John, and he is a consultant, advocacy, a poet, and I, I'm, I'm going off his, I'm going off his Instagram description, but I will let John uh, introduce himself, and then we will get uh, on to the conversation. So take it away, John. You know, Whitney, you could just, you could just say I'm a Renaissance man. I do a little bit of everything, right? <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just a little bit of everything. So you know, uh, yeah. So basically. Basically, what I do is I, I travel as a speaker, um, consultant, and spoken word poet. So yeah, I I recently, well, not recently, 2017 is really when I got into spoken word. Um, it actually one of my aides, um, she was living with me at the time, right? And uh, she broke the cardinal rule of every writer you don't look in their notebooks you know you know so she she was uh, i remember one night i went to bed i woke up the next morning and she's like okay uh don't kill me but when you went to sleep i looked in your journals and your poems are really really good and people need to hear this and i'm like nobody's gonna want to hear this like nobody's gonna want to hear this she's like okay so i chose two open mics you're gonna pick one and we're going whether you like it or not right and i'm like oh shit i have to do this you know so i picked one she dragged me there um and that was literally my first show ever and someone comes up to me afterward and goes how long have you been doing this and i'm like i just started no like, no way mm. uh, yeah so basically that was the moment where i was like oh I should be doing this like I should be doing this because a lot of what I write about is my experiences with, you know, cerebral palsy and also being a gay man as well. And just like life experiences with that. So a lot of people get the chance to connect with an experience that they're not familiar with in a way and kind of. I don't mean to cut, I don't mean to cut you off, but I. I can sort of I I can sort of relate to relate to you like really really well in that in that sense. No, not like you chose like the the spoken word like path, but I've kind of delved like into like stand up comedy, and I use I use my I use my experiences with Sarah Paulie like the same way that you do. I like I make I make jokes, but that I the I get that I get the end. Of, I can, I can, when you look at it, when you stand, when you stand back and like listen to all the jokes, it has an advocacy spin to it. And like, yeah, so I can like definitely, I can definitely sort of relate to, to you in that sense. I mean, you, you have, and that's the thing is you have to be able to laugh. You have to be able to laugh. Cause I think that, um, you know, when, when, when you're, when you're born with something like this, and you realize at, at every turn you do realize that you you're different you know what i mean mm -hmm. and and people people are gonna stare people are gonna say things people are gonna so if you're just like miserable about it all the time every day you're not gonna be able to thrive you have to be able to take it and and uh in a healthy way and you know Turn it into some smiles, some laughter. You know, you have to be able yeah. to to joke about it because that's how you get through life. Honestly, that's how I get through it. Because yeah, I joke and say they're giving me content, but uh, content to use. But um, and honestly, I I don't want it, like in the moment. I don't I as I've like aged. I don't want it. I don't want it slide. Like I make I make sure that they know like in that instant that this is not. This is not right. Like my my sarcasm, like pop, like comes out. Like mm -hmm. so, like I kind of, I've kind of grown into that. But that kind of that kind of brings me to uh to a different topic. And I think 
as we spoke prior to this, I, we wanted to talk about mental health and disability. And that kind of relates, I don't know about you, but like my material for stand-up comedy kind of intertwines with my mental health it's an outlet for me so absolutely um, so what is your what is your what is your thoughts on that like i think i think um speaking speaking in terms of, of from, from my spoken word poetry aspect um and and i guess also my the um speaking at schools and colleges um i didn't realize until covid hit in 2020 how much of a uh, mental health like outlet that all was for me to be able to be on stage and and telling my story and 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 sharing it with people when that all just disappeared in in an instant you know yeah now here i was you know in my apartment and i'm like what do i do now what do what do i do now i have i feel like i have no outlet I have no way of of speaking anymore to people. I mean, I could do virtual, but you know, early on in the pandemic, no one knew about that really. You know what I mean? And it was just kind of, um, I felt I felt lost because on top of that, I had to, you know, I'm in a I'm in a high risk group, so we had to make sure that you know you're in survival mode. You know what I mean? Just trying to survive too. And and I would even argue even that mindset still continues to this day where I'm like super careful even now I have to be, you know. So honestly, going into the um, going into like the mental health aspect, what I do is a huge, a huge outlet for me. I write constantly about things that are going on in my life, you know, things that I've been through in the past. It's a way of of kind of getting things out of the brain and being able to put them into words and kind of make space for new stuff. You know what I mean? Because Mm -hmm. life can be so overwhelming sometimes where, you know, the most important thing is to be able to take what's inside your head and kind of write it out so you can try and understand better and also make room for, to clarify your thoughts a little bit. So, yeah, I totally agree. And that's a good um way to like describe uh, describe it and everything and actually uh spastic chatter is a uh is kind of a product of covid because i got bored during lockdown and i was like let me do something uh productive with my time and so i started this podcast and it's a hundred and something episodes later top top 10 of it's listed on Feed Spots top to like number one on Sarah Baldy podcast. So like this, like my outlet has has turned has turned into something that I never thought was possible. And I get to meet all these amazing, amazing, uh, amazing people. But and like that's all due to like social media. But like going back to the mental health part, like social media has really um. Ever since, ever since like COVID and the p- pandemic, social media has really impacted my anxiety and and like and or depression and not so not and not. This is going to be surprising, but in more of a there is positive, but more so in a negative way because I'm so anxious reading like everybody's everybody's post that I let it I get I let it get to me way too much. So I kind of like have to remind myself to like to like step to like take a step back and like it's not my I, it's not my problem. Like other people's situations are not my problem. Like I does it make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I think I think also um you know so did you notice that anxiety getting getting heightened with social media during the pandemic too? Like during that time when you when you were like on social media mostly because of the podcast, you had to push content and things like yeah, that. It's more like reading other people's feeds. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie, I had to go 
I it's so bad. I get panic attacks now, and uh, it's so bad that uh, they did an MRI of my brain to make sure I wasn't having seizures because I'm having I'm having severe panic attacks where I like where I like black out and don't remember anything. Like I'll have conversations that I don't even remember. Like oh wow. So they thought that they thought I was having panic. They thought I was having seizures. Yeah, but it's not seizures. It's just severe panic attack, and all, all of it was brought on by like. Wow. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, you know, I think it's social media is is good and bad, like you said, and I think that um, we place so much value on like what are what are these people saying about me, or what are these people saying you know, in the comments, or did they like it? Did they, whatever. We yeah. place so much value on that, that it, like, it's, because honestly, I've, fall, I've fallen victim to that, too, sometimes, where where it's like, I'll, I'll, I'll post something that I'm like, oh, this is great. This is awesome, right? And, like, nobody responds to it. Nobody. And I'm like, wow, I mean, was it really great or was it just not good? And you realize, wait a second, you know, these people, they're, they're, I mean, you know, for the algorithm and things like that, you do need views. You do need that to like feed it. You know what I mean? But, but in all actuality, you know, if, if you believe and you're content with what you're, what you're doing and what you're putting out and what you, you don't need to compare yourself to anyone else. I mean yeah. that's uh, that's something that I actually say in in um, my speeches when I go to schools and colleges um, is we live in a world um, predominantly also because of social media and things like that where we focus so much on becoming becoming more like this becoming more like that or him or her or them you know and uh, we don't stop to just be be ourselves and and slow down and say where I am and who I am is okay and I'm enough yeah. as I am. Yeah. Or for me it's that I'm more like don't focus on other people and like what's going on in their life. Just focus on your just focus on yourself and like Yeah. You know what I mean? But um I, I was thinking about it and you mentioned that you have caregivers and well I've we've kind of I've had I've had caregivers in my past for me and we're kind of a uh, delving into that realm with my um partner but and like uh, can you talk about like the mental health of having to real of having to rely on a caregiver for your for your daily for your daily needs do you want do you want to touch do you want to touch absolutely on that? Absolutely. That's a big part of mental health. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's huge. It's huge. And, and right now I am extremely lucky to have three wonderful people, wonderful, that come in, they come into my house, uh, twice a day in the morning and, you know, and at, at night or, you know, times vary from day to day sometimes, but, um, they provide, just for people that are listening or watching that may not know exactly, you know, for, for me specifically, and this varies, as you know, with any person with cerebral palsy, depending on their type and severity and all that stuff. But for, for my needs, uh, they come and they help with like basic ADLs, activities, of daily living, like some dressing, you know, some, um, you know, helping me change my bed sheets, do laundry, things like that. And they also... I've trained them to do my um, range of motion exercises, you know, like uh, and things like that that I need to be able to keep moving my muscles. You know, I'm pretty sure you you might know some of those too. the stretching that needs to be done, you know. So um, they do that for me uh, twice a day, um, every day. Um, I right now have a wonderful, wonderful group who, you know, make my day better because they come in and they do their job and they they have fun doing it and it just makes it such an enjoyable environment but there are instances like years ago when i first started running a staff when i was in college you know i i had 
I had a, you know, a couple people that I had to end up firing uh, because, you know, it was just not, you, you could tell that they weren't, they weren't really made for the job. You know, I would mm -hmm. ask them to do little things and they would be huffing and puffing and, you know, it just, it made it, it made it difficult because it's, and it would make me anxious as a person because, you know, as people with disabilities, society teaches us that we're burdens yeah. on people, right? It teaches us that we're burdens. So that's something that we all have to actively unlearn yeah. and actively um, tell ourselves every day, like, wait, no, my needs are my needs to exist in a world that's not built for me. So, you know, any if anyone wants to complain about things that you need to basically exist, that's something that person's not made to for you it, to be in your life, you know, in any capacity, whether it be caretaker, especially caretaker, yeah. <laughs> um, or anything like that. That's awesome. Um, yeah, we've had, I've had, I've had caregivers in the past. Right now, I don't. Right now, I don't have any, but but um, but like my my partner is going to uh, has has one that comes in and she. She helps me too. I'm not gonna lie, cause because uh, when he first like well, he he's had him for like a for like almost two months, but like the first like the first one was like a no show. So I went on and I found I the one the agency found was like a no show, like right off the bat. So I went on to Facebook and I posted like the job description and everything. Yeah. And the funny thing is that that someone I went to high school with that I didn't even like associate with back at the time. Like reached out to me. It was like, it was like, I was like, I'd love to do it and everything. So like, like, and she. So now we have, I have a, I have somebody from that I went to school with that I wasn't friends with back there then. You go. Now we're like, now we're like close and everything. She, she comes over and helps us and like she helps me out of the kindness of her heart. Like, like, but like, like. One thing that I'm on that I that I'm curious about with the, with you is, did you ever have to like push for more for like more hours like like? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm actually I'm very lucky. This is part of the reason why I don't think I'm ever gonna be moving out of New York State because New York State. Oh, you you're in a very you're in a very good area. Yeah. I mean, I'm in I'm in Texas and there's like a thousand there's like a, not even a thousand people in my in my town so like you're in a, you're you're in like the prime you're in like the prime area like yeah I, I feel like I feel like my area we have to fight for we have to yeah. fight for everything we get which is it's it that's it's it's fucked up isn't it that's like yeah. so fucked up I mean. I so to give you some some background, like I grew up in in downstate rural New York, right? I grew up on a farm, yeah. and so in Dutchess County. So when I was there, you know, some of the home care services, um, they're not as plentiful, right? There, it's yeah, kind of, it's absolutely. harder to come by. And then when I went up to up to Albany, the the state capital for college college at u albany um i was like whoa there's tons of stuff up here you know and so now i you know i i do have um so what you were asking about like fighting for more hours so i'll yeah. i'll give you i'll give you an, i'll give you an example so i'm very lucky like i said it um where i get evaluated every year once or twice a year depending on you know things that go on for for um my home care programs that i have and um you know my it depends on the case manager like i've had case managers in the fa totally. past i've had case managers in the past that will literally fight you tooth and nail for asking for more hours you know my case manager currently is absolutely wonderful she's like if you yes. need more if you need more hours let me know we'll come we'll we'll do like a walkthrough and we'll see how many we can get you you know but exactly i've had case managers in the 
in the past where I'm like, what, what, what am I like? What is this? A exactly. FBI shakedown? Like, I just, I need some help. <laughs> like, I need. Yeah, more like help. we got, we got, we got, we. I, I feel like uh, cause this is my boyfriend's first time with dealing with Karen. He, he got, he got, he got, what? He got sort of lucky right off the bat, cause like he, cause like he doesn't need that much care, but he got, he like she, she stretched it so, so much, by, like getting him like. So much care that like, like he's he's set, and like it's not always it's not always like that. Yeah, and I, I'm always like I have switched um, uh, like physical intermediaries, which is like the companies that that yeah. you get yourself. You know that. I'm sorry. I'm used to having to explain no, it. You to know, people. I, yeah. <laughs> people, people. Like, People listening to this might not what you're not might, might not understand. That's what you're true. Saying, That's so. true. I'm I like have a mode when I'm like in explain mode. So basically, yeah. Yeah, so the fiscal intermediary is basically the um like I have hiring and firing power, and then the fiscal intermediary is the one who cuts the checks because it's through it's a state program through Medicaid through. Yeah. Um, so basically, um, I. You know, I'm very lucky that I'm at one of the agencies that pays the most in, in the state. But I have constantly, you know, I'm always looking for um, opportunities for my staff to get paid more potentially because that's another thing that needs to be addressed is because um, when we when we talk about mental health, it's a lot of things can affect my mental health as the person being cared for including mm -hmm. the well-being of the staff and the happiness of the staff that's working because yeah, if they're if they're happy they're gonna stay with you if they're, exactly if they're happy, they're not, they're that, 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 that's that's another issue that 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 you know i think a lot of people with disabilities face is keeping staff maintaining staff because of such uh low pay rates and also uh lack of benefits too that's a that's a big one um like i am very lucky that that you know i have two different programs that that my my staff work with me through and they both get paid well through that but what i would like to see is more benefits options for them yes. they don't currently have that so you know it's like you age out eventually like i like my staff are pretty young right now so once they get to the point where you know they're not in their parents insurance anymore yeah totally totally and it's like see you later gotta get another job because you can't give me insurance so that's exactly or like when you're when you're a caregiver has a family and they have to have insurance for their children so like you know so like they they choose to, they choose to, um, to leave to get insurance to get a better, uh, job or whatever for their, so that their kids could have, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah, totally. So is there, um, is there any other uh area of disability that impacts your mental health that we haven't talked about? I mean, I think that I think. So to to I'm gonna try and keep this story short, but because I know we're on a time limit. But um when so when I was in high school, um probably like fifteen, sixteen, I was at a point in my life where I was uh borderline suicidal because I was being bullied constantly by by a group of my own friends who I grew up with, which is crazy. Um this one person basically infiltrated the group i'm writing about it in a in a book that i'm working on right now so when it's done you'll learn about it but basically <laughs> uh but basically um he would make fun of my my left hand because you know my left hand doesn't move as smoothly as this hand oh, totally that, that's yeah. totally that it seems like total normal like, right. I, I have this, I have this. <laughs> So I, I always joke around and say, like, this hand's got a mind of its own. It's going to take over the world one day or something. But anyway, that's but anyway. Um, so the, the, the guy that kind of infiltrated the group, he would basically like at lunch, he would 
knock things off my tray on on onto the left side of of you know my chair so i would have to lean down and try and pick it up and he would laugh and a lot of other things so it got to a point where i was like just really not in a good space so finally one of my friends was like what's going on and he pulled me out of it and we went um to the school social worker and i started working with the school social worker for like two years straight after that like my friend brett and i would go to the social worker's office and eat lunch in there instead of um but so yeah that that had a huge impact on my mental health but in a weird kind of twisted sick and twisted way if that hadn't happened to me i wouldn't be where i am because i wouldn't have been forced to to kind of come to terms because in that process i remember let me share this one thing because it's big i remember um in the initial um social worker visit that i had um it was a three hour turned out to be a three hour visit he said to me he goes so you've never had a day where you said like why me why me you know and I was like, no, nope, never, never. And he he took a chance. He kind of came up to me, put his hands on my shoulders, and he said, uh, "Cut the shit." Yeah. He was like, he was like, everybody, we all know you have to have at least one time. So then my shoulders just dropped, and I started crying because I realized that I had for years kept this um, mask up of, oh, I need to be the quote unquote inspiring uh, yeah. you know gag gag inspiring all the time i need to be always happy i need to be this but i wasn't being me i wasn't coming to terms with oh i have cerebral palsy and sometimes it sucks you know so i can uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you i'm gonna tell you a story and then we can uh wrap up because i can again kind of relate to you like i um I moved. I moved my freshman year of high school, so I went to I went to elementary and uh, junior. I was a group of kids that knew me from like the very beginning, so I, I was didn't see me as any different. And then I moved to high school. I moved. I moved to high school, and there was only like there was only like maybe three hundred people in my entire high school. There was like forty people in my in my class. Um, and I was the only disabled kid, like that wasn't in special ed. And um uh and I kinda kept myself and the, one of the uh one of the like popular uh jocks and his and his and his crew like started making fun of me. They they um they would get behind me and drop uh books on the floor because they would it made, it made me it made me jump. And then, like, when we were doing the Pledge of Allegiance, they were like, Whitney, why don't you stand or whatever, like, some kind of stupid shit like that. But, yeah. But, but uh, what's, what's funny about my story, and I say it's funny because it's just my personality. Yeah, you I gotta live. Up, I ended up telling my older sister, and my older sister doesn't take that shit. So she went, she went up, she went up, behind, she went up behind him from, she went up behind him in the hall, tapped on the shoulder. And punched him in the face. So uh, <laughs> that's well, perfect. I wasn't messed. I wasn't messed up. Was like, but I don't condone violence. Like she got, some, she got suspended. But like, that was the one. That was the one. one that was the only time I was ever. I was ever picked up. I don't know if you ever heard of Mortal Kombat, the game Mortal Kombat, but I mean, yeah. your sister was like, finish him and punch him in the face. Yeah, there you go. That's perfect. <laughs> so like. That, that was the one and only time I was ever I was ever picked on. But like now 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 one of the like they like they kinda like follow follow me on social social media because it's so it's kind of awkward, but whatever. Uh, well, I hope they see this. That would be great if they see this. Yeah. But um at the end of every episode, John asked my guests if they have any advice for those watching. So, do you have any advice, like life advice or advice about mental health? For, for well, I, I think I think I think my biggest my biggest piece of advice would be to just I want you 
if no one's ever told you, I want you to know that you matter. I think that is so, so basic, but so many people don't hear that these days, that you matter. Everything that you bring to the table, that you bring to this life matters. So, and it's okay to not be okay. So if you're out there and you're struggling, um, it's okay to reach out for help. Reach out for help because there are so many people in this world that care about you. And even though if you're watching, you don't know me, I want you to know that I'm I care about you. Because if I ever met you in 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 real life or virtually, like I've met Whitney here, I care about you and I want you here. So that's what I'll say. That's great advice. And where can people follow you on social media? So you can follow me on all my, all my socials are John, that's J O N underscore Gilroy, G I L R O Y. You can follow me on all socials right there. I make it easy for everyone to find me because it's one thing everywhere. And you can also visit my website, uh, John Gilroy, that's J O N G I L R O Y dot com to learn more about what I do and also book me to come to your event or school or wherever. Awesome. Well, it was a nice to talk to you, John. And um, for those of you watching, I'll check back for another episode. And thanks. Bye. See you later.